what you don't have. Welcome to Your Future Is Now, hosted by Jim Grant and Bill Heinrich. Their show is dedicated to sharing information in business, health, and obstacles we face in our everyday lives. Jim is also the TV host of Messages of Inspiration and Hope on E360 TV. Bill is the author of Seven Levels of Truth and is a master in the world of getting clarity in your mind to clear out the cobwebs and remove mental barriers that hold you back. Each week, they will interview an exciting guest. We're so glad you've tuned in. Be sure to share the show. And now, here's Jim. And welcome to the show, ladies and gentlemen. Your Future Is Now is proudly brought to you today by the good guys at the 6minutewebinar.com. That's S-I-X minutewebinar.com. And today we have a, a Mr. Bill Heinrich with us. He is the honorary host here on the Toganet radio station. And he is also not only the co-creator of the 6-Minute Webinar, Mr. Bill is fondly known around the world as being the dean of the Six Minute Webinar. He's the author of The Seven Levels of Truth. Mr. Bill, welcome to the show, my man. Hey, Jim. Good morning. How are you today? Oh, I'm doing great. Just pr- just plum proud to be here. It's got a gr- we've got a great show with uh, Lars Gustafsson on, and oh my goodness, he- he's just fantastic, isn't he, Bill? Well, I'm sure it's going to be a pretty lively show. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. The last time we had Lars on before really exciting and the other thing that was exciting is we did a six minute webinar boot camp last weekend and just the mm. people are so amazed at the clarity they get after oh, going through that yeah gym. you oh, it's yeah. impossible to explain to people <laughs> what happens when they attend one of those but i know you were there you get to see it too oh yeah um, they're just stunned they get so much clarity oh, in yeah. fact we have a number of people now that are implementing the six minute webinar into all of the courses and training that they do so mm-hmm. that they can be working with people that have more clear, real clarity about what their purpose is in life and what direction they're going. Cause it makes it their job that much easier and they can help them even more. Once the people have the clarity, they don't have to clear through all the old stories and beliefs. So yeah, it's you're exciting. <clears throat> You're exactly right, because uh, ladies and gentlemen, I use the six minute webinar, of course, uh, I know it very well. And I tell you what, when I was doing that presentation on the summit over in India, the water conservation, and rainwater harvesting and uh, the honorary host there, the guest host, I should say, was the king of Oman. I wanted to make sure that I had a you know great presentation. So I used the six minute webinar to craft my presentation. And it worked out very, very well for us. I mean, my, my main goal, ladies and gentlemen, was to just put just put together a great presentation and, you know, put myself in a positive light. And I think everyone can appreciate that where, you know, when you're out there and in international TV and all that, you want to put your best foot forward. And uh, hey, Bill, it worked out OK for us, didn't it, brother? <laughs> yeah, yeah, it really did. No, no question about it. So let's get Lars going here. Yeah. This is going to be a great show. I'll let you introduce him, Jim. Oh, my goodness. We've had Lars on before, and he is just a fantastic guy. He is just a joy to listen to because today his topic is going to be on detachment, the core spiritual path of liberating your life and your soul. Think about that. Think of all the baggage in our lives that drag us down and I was talking to someone uh, yesterday and, uh, you know, we were talking about things and, you know, the things in life that really matter is our relationship with one another, the love we have for one another and whatever your thing is in life, that's, that's you, that's your God. If I can use that term, that's what you will serve. And that's why people who serve material things are the most miserable people on planet earth. And I better hush and let Lars come in here and talk a lot more intelligent about those higher level things. And I, Lars, how are you today, sir? Gentlemen, <laughs> it's wonderful to be here. Family, uh, thank you for joining us. Mm-hmm. And uh, what a wonderful pleasure. Thank you for having me on. 
Absolutely. And, you know, when you talk about, uh, you know, what, what you're going to be talking about today, your detachment, the core spiritual path of liberating your life. And so would you share with me and Bill a little background on how, where you came from to get to where you are today, sir? Yes, absolutely. So I was, I was introduced to the detachment process back in 2002 as part of a mystery school. And, um, at first it kind of worried me because I thought, you know, if I, if I detach from everything and everyone, all people, places, events, things and events, if I detach from my friends, my family, my business, everything, what's going to happen? You know, is, am I going to lose everything? Mm. <laughs> and yeah. uh, on the other side of that, no, I did not lose everything. <laughs> everything became richer and uh, more spectacular. And in the months that followed, um, life got really good and really amazing actually all relationships became richer all the abundance started to flow uh, business opportunities just different things that you know come from an unattached perspective a non-attached perspective mm -hmm. and uh then life got so good that i forgot about the detachment <laughs> yeah I, uh, I got re-hooked in and um you know so uh my coach and a really close friend Ed Straitzer, he introduced me back into the detachment process and at the beginning of 2019 and I've been practicing it ever since and uh, within days weeks of beginning um, that old feeling returned uh, that feeling of inner peace uh, tranquility mm. grace and ease mm. and uh, things that uh, were unclear became clear uh, uh, pathways that I didn't know what decisions to make became clear. And that has just only become uh, even more spectacular as the last two and a half years have gone along. And so, yeah, I just thought I would really, really share what's going on with detachment. And I see, you know, once you start practicing detachment, you can see how attached everybody else is. Oh, and yeah. Get into, get into why and how. Uh, yeah, so that's my background. And now just really, yeah. really loving it and sharing all about it. I love this talk. I love this topic, Lars. You know, if you look at it in, in its simplest form, I've been studying this 25 years. And mm -hmm. if you look at look at it in its simplest form, because there's duality in everything in the universe, yes. the other side of detachment is attachment. Mm -hmm. And with attachment, the only thing that you can obtain is suffering. Mm. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, words of the Buddha there uh, all mm -hmm. suffering comes from attachment yeah yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. that's Absolutely. it's and people live you know I've I've written books and given talks on surviving versus thriving right mm -hmm. and the the most rudimentary um, aspect of thriving is detachment Mm. I agree completely. It doesn't yes. mean you don't care, does it, Lars? Yes, indeed. Uh, and you know, to to unpack that a little bit, what does what does thriving really mean? Our, you know, every time that we use a word like thriving or abundance or any of those things, that uh, the the recipient of listening to that word or those words uh, will uh, receive those words from the perspective of all their beliefs of their lifetime, most mm -hmm. of which are not theirs. Uh, we accumulate beliefs uh, from childhood all the way through our lives, and then the beliefs form the structure of our lives. And mm -hmm. so when one person thinks about thriving, I grew up mm -hmm. in a village in East India, so thriving was having a shirt on your back. Um, wow. Thriving having running water. We had no running water for most of my childhood. Thriving mm -hmm. would be having light at night, you know? So, uh, yeah, it's all, all a matter of perspective. And then mm. uh, thriving as well. Uh, can, you know, once one starts to thrive, that within that, like I was saying in my introduction, um, there, there are layers of, of attachment that begin to form. Uh, we form attachments to who we are as part of that, uh, that thriving, our, our ego attachments, spiritual ego, all of those kinds of things kick into gear on the so-called positive side of life. So, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the, you know, when you're in detachment, you no longer have a need to be defensive. Yes. Mm. And, and defensiveness is the number one guidepost that tells you 
you're headed the wrong direction because there's yeah. nothing to defend. And I speak of this from an energetic standpoint. Yes. I'm yeah. not talking about being physically threatened, but people are all, they all, <laughs> I've done this so long. They always speak from a defensive place because they're defending their position for fear of right or wrong or being good enough. Right, Lars? Yes. That is a beautiful way of unpacking that. Um, the, the, the aspect of equanimity, living, mm -hmm. living life from a perspective of no charge. Mm -hmm. and, uh, the moment we get a charge of any kind, uh, we can see there's, there's the charge of positive and negative emotions. And then there is pure joy. Pure joy without attachment is is the elixir of life. It is the, one of the most beautiful places to be. We, we experience mm. that pure joy when we're in nature, when we're observing nature, there's no defensiveness in nature. You're, you're in nature, you're, you're in God's creation. Uh, and when you're observing God's creation, whether it be uh, looking into baby's eyes or looking into loved one's eyes or uh, mm. any of these in the now moments, that's what grace is and that's what joy is. Uh, when, when we have happiness or any other form of emotion that is tied to some result or some external factor of person, time thing or event or some kind of outcome based, uh, then we're, we're leading into a charge. Uh, and mm -hmm. then once we practice attachment in the midst of that, catching that, and we do the detachment we're going to talk about in a few minutes, um, that's where true, the true peace that surpasses all understanding is experienced. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I can I can attest to that because as Bill knows, and you know, when some when someone attacks something that I love and passionate about, like my shows, mm -hmm. I I'm I'm still attached to that big time. And and you know, folks, uh, you know, it's uh, if you let things go, and I haven't learned this yet. I still got to go to night school on this one here. <laughs> but when you the more you're attached to something, the more it enslaves you. It really does, mm -hmm. and it, it it can keep you awake at night and. Uh, you know, it's something that we all need to learn. We all need to help one another because each and every one of us need help. And ladies and gentlemen, we got about seven seconds left before we go to commercial break. So if you come back with us after this commercial break, I'm sure Lars and Bill will help us all. <laughs> we'll be right back right after this brief message. Six minute webinar, as I like to uh, tease him about. He's also the author of the seven levels of truth that that book. It's a wonderful book. I've got a copy of it. I highly endorse it. It's available on Amazon. And today with Lars Gustafsson and Bill Heinrich on here, my goodness gracious, you guys are in for a treat because it's all about living a life that you want to live rather than the one that you, <laughs> one that you're experiencing because Lars's topic today, detachment. And that's what it's all about. And the core spiritual path of liberating your life and your soul. And I know there's a lot of people out there, including yours truly, that really uh, want to hear some more about this great topic. Because, Bill, this is a great conversation, isn't it, sir? Well, <clears throat> it's, it's even bigger than that, Jim. It's a okay. miraculous conversation. There you the go. Thing, well, it really is. Because mm -hmm. the thing, you know, I lived a life of misery. And when I decided to walk away from that over 25 years ago, literally walked away from it, changed everything but my name, I started discovering resources that are available to everyone that are free, that the mm. universe provides. And these resources all come from our non-physical existence. They come from energy. And the only way that you can connect and really use these resources is by detaching from the physical and focusing on the non-physical and the energetic vibrational side of life. And when you do that, that's when miracles happen, right, Lars? Beautifully said. Yes, absolutely. When we're, when we're outwardly focused into our 3D world, and that is our primary focus on life. So we're externally referenced. What you were talking about was releasing all external reference and then became internally referenced. When we become internally referenced, we uh, connect to perhaps for some, <clears throat> it's happened for me, to our soul for the very first time. Our soul exists outside of time. 
It mm -hmm. is a, a timeless, timeless, infinite being. Mm. And uh, when we when we're so externally referenced, we can't listen to our soul. We don't hear it actually, even if it's shouting at us. <laughs> and so the energetic side is the fact that uh, everything that we think and do is uh, has has an energetic effect into our environment. Mm -hmm. and one thing that we don't learn is uh, in life, at least I didn't, was the fact that we accumulate these energies within us and we accumulate mm -hmm. the cords with yes. all, the, all the things that we've observed. Oh. Our, 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 our eyes can only see a very narrow spectrum of the light spectrum. Mm of the 3D world. Our unconscious <laughs> takes in over 20, 20 million bits of data per second. So we're accumulating enormous amounts of data. And uh, that's why I say that the ultimate insanity is living up to other people's expectations, which are built on uh, beliefs that are not theirs. Mm -hmm. And that that is, uh, that is the aspect of leading a very uh, sad and stressed, and it could be happy. However, that happy is contingent on other people's beliefs, like I said, that are not theirs. And so yeah. we become internally self-referenced, self-referential reality. That's where we are actually in union with the divine, with God. Mm -hmm. and, yes. And, and that is that is the aspect that we're called to, uh, to live a greater aspect of ourselves, a greater vision of our life. We accumulate beliefs about what our life vision is. And uh, I've seen it happen many, many times where uh, I passed on this detachment to others, and uh, that's why I've taken up the, the call to actually start really talking about this on a mass scale, because every single person says, you know, my vision that I had previously for myself just evaporated, and a new one, grander one, greater one, more true one actually emerged. And so for those, those like what you experienced, uh, Bill, the the reemergence, the and, and mm -hmm. it can happen super, super fast, and um, it's, it's, it is truly miraculous, like you said, because uh, when we call uh, one of the parts of, of this, this call is I'm going to provide a link to a free uh, meditation download that I created, uh, 18 minutes, and it guides you through all the steps. And we'll, we'll kind of talk through the steps. But one mm -hmm. of the very first things that we do is we call on the archangels of the four directions. And uh, when we call an archangel energy, there is something absolutely spectacular, magical, and miraculous that actually occurs. And we have them help us and assist us in getting rid of the millions and millions of cords and, and all the things that are known and unknown to us that are actually influencing the expression of our life and the expression of our external reality, which is actually a filter to being able to connect to our soul, which is actually perpetual and infinite. And therefore, we, when we do, do the detachment, even for the very first time, we actually start to see life through the eyes of our soul, which is through the eyes of infinity. Mm -hmm. mm. You know, it's to me, the thing that's so astounding, Lars, is everyone knows that everything on Earth is just energy. It's been scientifically proven. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. Yet, because we have to survive, because we have our five basic needs, and we're focused on that survival, we end up trapped in the physical world. And the mm -hmm. more you let go of that and become familiar, and I know Jim has learned this from me, you become familiar with the energetic world, and you focus on the energy that you're generating Amen. So that you can connect with the infinite magnificence, the power of the universe, because oh, there's yeah. a much greater energy out there than ourselves. And the more we can release our toxins, as I call them, to the mm -hmm. physical world, and you connect to that, like attracts like. This is how you attract great things into your life. It's not by having the answers. It's not by having a plan. It's not by having goals. It's about being responsible and focusing on the energy. Oh, and as yeah. you do that and let go of the attachment to the physical, your suffering lessens instantly, mm -hmm. instantly. You know, and the you're word... able to then create miracles. Mm -hmm. Yes. I just, yeah. I'm just going to say very quickly, the one thing that uh, made a, a statement I heard that really you know, just hit me right between the eyes, as the old saying goes, is that whatever you treasure in your heart, that will be your God. And uh, that's a wake-up call. 
that's a wake up call. You know, it really is. Mm -hmm. And Lars, yeah. you were going to say something. Please go ahead, sir. Yeah, it's uh, it's just really expanding and unpacking uh, what Bill and, and you've been saying is that uh, the miraculous occurs when we detach from all things physical and yeah. non-physical. We yeah. are affected by all the morphic fields of beliefs out there. We are affected by living up to uh, avatars or archetypes or personalities of ourselves, uh, father, son, uh, mother, daughter, uh, sister, brother. Uh, coach, writer, author, thought leader, whatever it is, uh, there there are all these avatars we have. And so one piece of homework that I'll get everybody to do uh, right after this call is is write down all the disc all the names of all the uh, versions of yourself that you are expressing out there. And then mm -hmm. within each, when you practice the detachment uh, meditation, detach on each of those until you dissolve them to zero. And then mm -hmm. when you do that, you're actually uh, participating in the dissolving of personas and personality types that you have been upholding your whole life. And then the true version of you comes through. And then if you're married, you will, you will re-engage right after that from a very full cup perspective. Mm -hmm. The ultimate in all relationships is to not complete each other, rather be complete within the relationship and be complete from a perspective of soul full. Have your soul full of energy. Call back all your power. Release all that is not yours. Suspend all belief and align yourself with the infinite wisdom of your soul. When mm. you do that, you actually participate in, in what Bill was saying is actually you become a miracle generating machine. Mm -hmm. And that, that is something quite amazing. And it's actually everything that we even observe when we observe uh, all the chaos that's actually going around us in, in the world right now, by detaching uh, any emotion that you have to us, it's, it's very easy. I still get caught up in the emotion on a daily basis. So the detachment practice is a daily thing. It's like when you, when you sense a charge, recognize that that charge, if you're angry or sad or mad or frustrated or, or whatever it is, you are literally sending that energy to all of those people. What if it's people who are oh, in yeah. a or in a, you know, being affected in some way due to some kind of disaster or something like that, and you're in a state of fear or anger, that is not actually the, the, the state of being able to manifest creation and manifest a result that is positive and beneficial to those people. And so that's where the detachment practice becomes much bigger than us, where mm -hmm. we are calling back our power, we are centering ourselves, we're entering this pure state of equanimity wow. and experiencing grace and ease. Yeah, you know, it's, it's impossible, Lars, to have an emotion without a story. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. It's impossible. And so as these emotions come up, we become the byproduct of obligations that have passed, been passed on to us. And what I found out when I started my transformation over 25 years ago was I had no idea who I was. Yeah. No idea yeah. at the age mm -hmm. of 40, I was about 44 at the time. Uh, mm -hmm. It's just I was I, I had no idea at all. I was stunned to realize I didn't know what I liked. I didn't know who I was. And it's by being detached, I could then have experiences purely from an observational standpoint and notice if it th these experiences, what I like to say, either take me closer to my soul or take me away from it. Mm. Well said. Beautiful. Yes. That is, that, that is so very true. And I'll tell you right now, ladies and gentlemen, we're about seven seconds away from going to commercial break again. My goodness gracious. I can't wait to come back after these commercials. And here's some more. So please stay with us. For a short time, the six-minute webinar has a free trial that you can actually get in there and try the six-minute webinar for yourself. 
Just go to six minute webinar.com, all spelled out S I X W E B I N A R. Six minute. Oh, I forgot. The, I forgot the minute, didn't I? M I N U T E, <laughs> six minute webinar.com forward slash free trial, F R E E trial, T R I A L. And I'm telling you, this show today. If you're wanting to get detached from the things that just grind you up one side and down the other, ladies and gentlemen, you're at the right place because Mr. Bill Heinrich is an expert in letting go of all the negative energy. He's the author of The Seven Levels of Truth. And Mr. Bill, you and Lars, you guys, oh my God, I enjoy, I really enjoy listening to you because you, Bill, you guys are just straight on, aren't you, buddy? Well, you know, when you start learning, uh, about the power and the resources available to us mm -hmm. um, and detachment is the key to it and I want to tell you a really quick story with a client of mine okay. this just happened last week Jim mm -hmm. he filled out and requested one of these SBA loans for COVID which are very hard to get because they go so fast right know? and it, it took Oh, over a couple of months. And as I worked with him, I said, just let go, just hold good energy and whatever's supposed to happen will be fine. Everything will be great. Don't worry. Well, he gets a notice from them about three weeks ago that his loans approved and they needed a little more paperwork. So he sent it to them. And I said, just <clears throat> hold the energy, stay detached. Don't worry about it. Right. Just keep feeding it. And the energy that you feed to it doesn't come from how you handle that situation. It's how you handle everything in life. And I'm going to have Lars talk about that piece in a second. He gets an email from them the following week. And here's what it says. We have your loan approved for $300,000. And we have a question. Would you like four hundred dollars instead? <laughs> mm, that's a tough question. In my mind. <laughs> This is a this is one thousand percent true. Yes. And he, I said, see, this is what happens, right, Lars? That's how <laughs> yes. miracles occur. Why yeah. did they do that? Who cares? Who cares? Uh, what is a miracle? A miracle is beyond our understanding. Mm -hmm. A With miracle it. and uh, magic. Magic and it's, miracles are all beyond our conscious awareness of that's we're releasing, we're, we're surrendering to a much, an infinite power, actually. That's what we're releasing. It's, a, it's an unexpected event that has a positive impact on our lives. Yeah. This is what a miracle is. But Lars, before we go any yes. further, I'm going to, I want you to talk a lot more about that. But let's take a minute and let the audience know how to get a hold of you. We're all yeah. running here talking. So give them your how to get a hold of you via email, website, and such. Sure, sure. We'll provide a link that goes along with this uh, this interview that uh, will take folks directly to the downloadable detachment mm -hmm. process meditation and another thirty minute webinar. And um, yeah, that'll be that'll be the gift. Uh, UEXL, U Uncle Edward XL dot org is my website, and that's our institute website with uh, lots of amazing courses on there. And um, yeah, thank you. That's awesome. And if somebody wanted to contact you directly, would it be Lars at UEXL? Uh, yes, actually, it's best through through info at uuexl dot org is, is one of the best tracks. Yeah, mm -hmm. great. Awesome. We'll awesome. make sure that information is in the description of the show, ladies and gentlemen. And please share this with someone else because you know that you know that you know. You or someone else that you know really needs to hear this to lighten their load in life. And uh, mm -hmm. I'm, we're just so honored to have Lars here with us. And mm -hmm. Lars, I tell you, I'm just going to turn the mic over to you because I know, brother, you're going to say something a lot more intelligent than I can. <laughs> oh, this is so beautiful. This, just the energy of this, you know, the just opening the conversation uh, where... Folks out there are experiencing what Bill experienced, what you've experienced. We've all been there. And we were talking about stories and how stories, like how, how emotion arises out of the stories. Bill, you were saying that. Mm -hmm. And that is, that is something that um, is really, really a deeply profound aspect of life. We create stories. We have memories of uh, our whole life. And most of those memories 
are not actually the full experience themselves because we're only taking in a couple bits of information consciously. However, we're taking in 20 million bits of data per second unconsciously. Mm. And so there's a tremendous energetic connection to our parents and then they've downloaded it from their parents and they've downloaded it from their parents. And so we're actually in the practice of detachment. We are actually for the very first time, potentially in our entire family lineage, stopping mm -hmm. that flow, stopping the flow of stories, stories that are just regurgitating a whole bunch of stuff. Most mm -hmm. of them, uh, uh, imp uh, imperfect perceptions of what happened, what didn't happen. And that's, we drag that all with us. We drag it like a big bag with us everywhere we go. And we're trying to manifest things and we're trying to detach while also still dragging all those stories with us. And so the detachment process itself is actually a process of releasing all that is not ours, calling back our soul power, and uh, cutting all those cords, those cords with all the things that we've ever, ever seen or experienced or witnessed or been involved with. And that actually frees us up to actually be our true selves, our true expression of our soul comes through and, and writes, mm. writes a new story in the now. Mm. And that is something that is, um, that's a miraculous experience to, actually, to, to behold. Uh, personally, I've experienced it. Uh, you were talking about that on offline here. Um, we're all experiencing it. So as soon as, uh, as soon as, and the, and the fact is, is that when we, when we detach, we create an energy field so magnificent, so huge that we actually affect everybody else in life. People will ask you, audience, as you start to do your detachment practice, what on earth has changed with you? You see more mm. people. What's your secret? Yeah. You yeah. seem to be, uh, to be able to hold it together in the midst of incredible turmoil. What's mm. going on? What is your secret? And when it comes down to it, it is, I simply do not engage with the external world in the same way that you do, or mm -hmm. the same way that I used to. You are, as Bill said, the observer. The true observer is, the, is in a state of equanimity. What is equanimity? It's a place of zero it's a it's right in the middle between all of the human-based emotions of positive and negative you know we live we live our lives trying to be positive and then we come into the spiritual world and we hear about vibration and we want to be positive and i was one of those i, I had mantras i had affirmations i did you know everything from tapping to you name it and and it was like and, and but i wasn't detaching mm -hmm. and so i was, I was Experiencing this continuous, it was almost like being in the rough water of a rough raging river all the time, perpetually, nonstop. Because mm -hmm. the more you become aware, the more conscious you become aware of the positive and negative and the and thoughts, we have an ocean of, of belief underneath the surface. And that ocean of belief is creating all sorts of perceptions that create negative emotions. And so you're perpetually doing your affirmations and, and meditations and tapping and all this sort of stuff. You're doing it perpetually. However, there is a place, and this is now, the time where it all is let go. And that, that is gone. And now as soon as you start, uh, start uh, practicing the detachment, you are you are becoming more for everybody in your life. And then they become, they, it's magnetizing. They'll want to know what is this and, and pass it on, pass on the detachment meditation, pass on the link, get, get people involved with detachment so that you're, you're actually experiencing this with others. And then one person at a time, it only takes one person to change the world. Mm -hmm. Think of where Gandhi was. Think of where Nelson Mandela was. Yeah. First form of equanimity and detachment. Completely you know, the self-referential reality. <laughs> yeah, when you when you look at it in 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 the, in the most basic way, there are only two emotions, two basic emotions. Yeah. One is love. One is fear. Mm -hmm. You can only have fear mm -hmm. when you're attached to the physical. That's, That's the only time you you mm -hmm. cannot create fear in the non-physical. You can only create love and mm. the, the energy 
of that love, the unconditional love, that's who we are at a soul level, is we are just pure, unconditional love, always in a state of disturbance because of what's going on in the physical around us, and because we're taught nothing but, you know, the desperate need for survival when we come into the physical uh, and and get stuck there. So yes. I know we're... <clears throat> Go ahead, Lars. You want to say something? Yeah, the uh, the the expression of the physical. What what we are is we are manifestations of of um, like you were saying, pure energy. Mm -hmm. And ninety nine point nine 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 percent of what we uh, what we don't see is also influencing us. And so we have influences like electromagnetic frequencies that affect us and create stress inside of us. Mm -hmm. We can get dehydrated. We don't. We we might eat toxic food. We, all these different kinds of things. And then there's the aspect of the non-physical, which is the angels and the demons mm -hmm. and other energies and other entities that actually influence us. And one of the things about detachment is that it actually takes you outside. It, it puts you into complete dominion complete mm -hmm. minion of your path and they cannot influence you in a negative way. And that's mm -hmm. something very, very powerful because then you become an infinite power source where you have access and, uh, and dominion over the non-physical and physical. Mm -hmm. you know, yeah, we're about, the, oh, go ahead, Jim. I was just going to say, we're about 15 seconds from going to commercial break. And I know that there's someone out there saying, Oh my goodness gracious. I want to walk through that door. I want to get off this emotional roller coaster. Mm. I want to live the life that I was destined to live. And we're going to have a lot more with Lars right after this brief message. com forward slash put in the two words together free trial you can test drive the six minute webinar for yourself and you can see the value of what the six minute webinar can do for you and i'm joined with uh, bill heinrich today and mr lars gustafson and my goodness gracious oh Lars, would you be so kind, sir, as to share your website and your email address with everyone so they can get in touch with you, sir? Right on. The uh, Institute website that houses our amazing courses and faculty is uexl.org. And the email to reach us is info at uexl.org would be awesome. Look forward All to All right. And we'll have that in the description of the show, ladies and gentlemen, along with a free uh, gift from Lars and Mr. Bill. Oh, my goodness. You two guys are smacking it right out of the park every time you say well, something. You know what I was just thinking, Jim? You know, Lars, you might want to make a note of this. Last week on the show, we had Pam McPherson, mm -hmm. who wrote a book called Vigil. It's a book mm -hmm. of poems she wrote as she sat vigil with people um, who were crossing over. Mm. the other dimension yeah. or near death um, and we're alone and she's done this uh, with another with a group of volunteers for 25 or 30 years and mm -hmm. wow. the, the this vigil um, the it's called vigil the art of being the art of being present right and she spoke of specific Specifically said, prior to going in to sit vigil, I would always empty my shell so that mm. I could be totally present. Wow. That is detachment, right, Lars? That is. That is. That gives us a wonderful uh, opportunity to talk about the process and, and just break it down a little bit uh, mm -hmm. in terms of, you know, if, if one says, you know, I detach, there's there's a tremendous amount of other energy that's actually going on. There are beliefs around it. There are all sorts of different kinds of things. So it actually takes getting into a state of zero mind. And Ed Strater taught me a really cool trick to do that. Uh, in the process of the meditation, you, you breathe in, hold your breath, and you count your heartbeats to 10 to 15. And that gets your mind to zero. 
you call on the archangels of the four directions, Archangel Raphael from the east, Gabriel from the south, Michael from the west, Uriel from the north. You thank them for their assistance in assisting you in detaching and cutting all cords and removing all that is not yours. And then you call back all your thoughts and you convert them into love. How often, how often have we done that in our lifetime? Where we say, mm. I call back all my thoughts, all of them. We think around 50 to 70,000 thoughts a day, most of them unconsciously. Most of them are 90% are the ones that we thought the day before. And so we have a repetitive thought pattern generating an enormous amount of energy out there in the universe. And then that, and then it can, it has this boomerang effect where they where where were those predominant of thoughts? And so how do we how do we cut that all off? How do we heal all of it instantaneously? We call back all of our thoughts and we convert it into love. Wow. And we detach, we detach from all people, places, times, and events, cut all cords in this timeline, all timelines, in this, in this dimension, all dimensions. We are surrounded by many, many dimensions, many homes, many rooms, as Jesus said. We are surrounded by many dimensions, many realms. And so we're being influenced constantly. And so what we're doing is we're actually cutting that all off. We're commanding it because we do have dominion over our soul mm -hmm. and uh, nobody else does. And then we call back all of our power into our soul, which is a miraculous feeling. And then we release all energies that are not ours. And when we say energies like Bill, you and I, we've been talking this whole time about energies and that everything is energy. And so when we command three times, I release all energies that are not mine. That is kind of like taking a spiritual shower. And you're talking about mm -hmm. the book Vigil. I've been studying very, very much over all these years or over 20 years, I've been studying life after death. And one of the, one of the predominant things that actually happens or, or stories that comes back from folks that have been on the other side is that they go through a spiritual shower to wash off earth, wash mm -hmm. off of this world, wash off all the beliefs, wash off all the energies so that what is left is the pure soul, is the pure energy of who you are as a beautiful being. Mm -hmm. And so what you're doing is you're actually practicing that through this detachment practice on this half of the sky. And you're doing it, you're doing a practice of washing off all of the energies. And then you finish off with, I now suspend all belief all of my beliefs and align myself with the infinite wisdom of my soul. Mm. And then you open your eyes and, and look at the world as if you've seen it for the very first time. Wow. And the first time that I've done this and many, many times since I open my eyes and the, the sensation, the, the, the emotion is so pure that tears come to your eyes when you just observe the simplest of things, a bird mm. outside, a bee flying by, mm. a, a flower waving in the wind. You just like you, you just start to observe the tiniest minutia of the gorgeous nature oh, of the heaven within which we live. And we actually lose that because we are so drowned out by stories and by all of the beliefs oh, and all of the records of the past and all these energies that are not ours. And so when mm. we release all of that, we're reclaiming our power in its purest form. Mm. Purest form. I really I really like that because you know, one of the things that I've I've learned in life, you hear farmers complain about the drought and things are dry and all that. You know what? The birds continue to sing. Mm. They really do. And I could just picture someone out there saying, this is what I want to do. I want to let go of everything. I want to forgive myself and I want to live. Mm. And brother, you are singing their song, Lars. Yes. I tell you, it's amazing, isn't it, Bill? Oh, I, I love the depth. Uh, that you've taken this Lars and um, on the break, as I said to you, this is definitely showing up as your primary calling in life is bringing this mm. message to the world. It is, mm. it's so powerful and it's so essential. If, if you're one that practices spirituality, you must understand detachment mm. at the deepest or highest level possible. Ooh, you must. Yeah. Yeah. Without it, you are only thinking about being spiritual, right, Lars? Indeed, indeed. The the uh, the definition of spirituality, the def definition of religion, 
uh, and what what if we if we really take into account everything that has ever transpired in the history of man it is the duality nature of one one person's beliefs opposing another's and what what mm -hmm. happens here in the detachment process is that we all arrive at a single place a single common place of soul power Mm. What that will manifest into this world, a whole new timeline will actually begin to emerge. As the more of us practice the detachment, we will actually see the essence in every single religion, every single spirituality, the essence, the very core is you must detach. You must, mm. let, you must cleanse yourself of all the energies that are not yours. Wow. And then you can receive information that is appropriate and and experiences that are appropriate for this new level of vibration that you're at and so what that what what that experience is like is going to be different for each person however what it what actually is expressed is a greater version of yourself a higher mm -hmm. vibration version of yourself a higher frequency version of yourself so you will you will actually bring out of your closest relationships your family members you will bring a new energy from them they will, they will not feel judged by you anymore, eventually. In the beginning, they will, of course, have their stories. But as your energy starts, see, our brains are taking in and our bodies and our cells are taking in the vibrational frequency of everybody around us. Our heart has a toroid, donut-shaped magnetic field that goes out 16 to 20 feet. And when we're in stress, it comes all the way down to just one foot. And so when we're in this detached state, we're actually vibrating out and creating a sphere of energy within which others who are close to us have the benefit and they as well will expand and they will also experience the beauty of this practice that you're doing <laughs> you know the, jim this is one of the things i teach my client it's when you understand energy mm -hmm. and you come from a place of love no matter what mindset, what story, what emotion the other person is in, they can't block that energy, can they, Lars? Mm. Well, no. It's and impossible. It, it, is, it, is literally quite, it is literally impossible. If you put a candle mm. into a dark room, which one wins? Oh, yeah. The light it's, shall always dissipate the darkness. And yeah. the, the aspect of being conscious, like I, I encourage everybody to practice detachment when you're um, watching a show, when you are triggered by something on social media, when you are triggered by something someone says in the family. I and mean, one of the things about spiritual life is our families are really where it all happens. We can, you know, we can... We can be spiritual and all nice and so forth and in the external world, but then as soon as we're around our family, they bring out, they bring up because they have all the stories. They have all the experience of an entire life, right? So they, mm. they see us differently. So they, the, the aspect of this detachment, I, I will encourage folks to not only practice it in their own mind, like just go through the detachment while you're in the presence of your family, mm -hmm. uh, practice patience, practice compassion, practice grace, practice gratitude practice compassion because once you're on the on on in the practice of detachment you will see everybody around you living out stories of attachment and it takes tremendous compassion to not judge very important to not judge because then mm -hmm. you're right back into attachment yeah <laughs> detach <laughs> and be compassionate and bring the space of that Bring the space of that love to everyone and every everything in your life. You know, Jim, the last time we had Lars on, mm -hmm. um, I'm going to say the same thing I said the last time. We need to have him on the show again, don't we? Oh, my <laughs> goodness gracious. We shall. We shall. I mean, I love yeah. the, uh, the analogy used about the candle because in the Arizona Guard out there at night with a vast darkness, someone could just flicker sure. a lighter 20 yards away and it just that all that darkness could not squelch that light. Thank you, mm -hmm. ladies and gentlemen. We'll be back next week.